District Superintendent. Tonight was the first of seven public interviews of people who want the school's district's top job. The board is expected to get through four of those interviews tonight and another three will happen tomorrow. The fate of these roads now in question after a proposed road millage failed by just eight votes. A small community had a big plan to fix its roads and it came up eight votes short. Fox 47's Christiana Ford went to Williamstown Township to find out what's next after the road improvement bond failed last night. Vote yes sign still up. We really pushed to get people out to vote on this. Williamstown Township in Eastern Ingham County hired a firm to analyze the roads and discovered they had a $7.5 million problem. They just kind of keep getting worse and worse, so we are, we feel like we're playing whack-a-mole. Without money from Governor Gretchen Whitmer's multi-billion dollar plan, the township decided to try and fix it without the help of the state. But with all precincts reporting, it came down to eight votes and a big fat no. It's just unfortunate that it was so close. We have um, a, a road in a subdivision that's almost gravel now called Charles Field. Um, that's, that's one of our worst roads. Patrick Rueco lives on that road and he voted yes. So the county truck shows up once a week. It fills it in with a shovel full of, uh, I think they call it cold patch. It doesn't last but a day or two and uh, you can see it's crumbling. Around 5,000 people live in the township, 4,400 registered, but only 52% voted. I'm sure my vote counted. Oh, I'm so glad it didn't pass. Now it's back to the drawing board to try to come up with a plan to fix roads like Epley, not throwing out the possibility of dirt roads. We'll have to see what's next. We were really kind of, you know, focusing on being able to move forward on addressing all our roads and the funding is just not there. So we'll have to decide. Christiana Ford, Fox 47. Thanks, Christiana. There can't be a recount until the State Board of Canvassers certifies the election results. We'll let you know if the township asks for one. Still to come on Fox 47 News at 10, accusers of Harvey Weinstein are speaking out after the 67-year-old received a 23-year prison sentence. What they have to say. Plus, check this out. A surveillance camera caught a drag race that set, yes, that car flying. But first. An address to the nation from President Trump about the coronavirus pandemic. I'm David Spunt in Washington with more on the president's message. Sarah Swiss Tech. Storm Shield Weather with Brett Connor. This is Fox 47 News at 10. After consulting with our top government health professionals to keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. President Donald Trump is taking major action against the coronavirus outbreak. In a primetime ad address from the Oval Office, he listed new emergency actions, the largest of which is the suspension of all travel from Europe except for Great Britain. Fox News correspondent David Spunt has more on the actions his administration is taking. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. President Trump addressing the coronavirus fears sweeping the country, telling Americans that his administration is working closely with top health experts, finding out ways to contain the spread. I will always put the well-being of America first. If we are vigilant and we can reduce the chance of infection, which we will, we will significantly impede the transmission of the virus. His address comes as state leaders around the country are postponing and canceling major events. A number of professional sports teams will also play games without fans. The virus is rattling Wall Street. Stocks took another deep dive. The Dow fell more than a thousand points, closing in bear market territory. Earlier, the president and members of his administration met with banking executives to discuss the state of the economy. This is not a financial crisis. And the banks and the financial system are, are in sound shape and we are here to help. On Capitol Hill, House Democrats are working hard to put together their own version of an economic stimulus bill, 
rejecting the president's call for a payroll tax cut. We're focused right now on the health and well-being of everyday Americans, of the American people, and we want to put families first. That's where our priority is. Lawmakers are expected to vote on the stimulus bill sometime Thursday before they leave for next week's congressional recess. In Washington, David Spunt, Fox News. As part of our continuing coverage of the outbreak, we will be airing a special report Friday after the news at 10. You can get the facts about the virus, its spread, and how to protect yourself and your family. Mid-Michigan doctors will also talk about what's being done to prepare here in Mid-Michigan. Chicago is postponing its annual tradition of dyeing its river green for St. Patrick's Day, as well as postponing this weekend's St. Patrick's Day parade. The city joins many others who have postponed or canceled St. Patrick's Day events due to the coronavirus. Detroit announced today it was also canceling its St. Patrick's Day parade. Accusers of the disgraced movie Mongol Harvey Weinstein are speaking out after the 67 year old received a 23 year prison sentence. Weinstein was sentenced today in a New York City courtroom after a month of being convicted of rape and sexual assault. Some of his 80 accusers spoke in Los Angeles, calling this sentence a step in the right direction. One actress said she couldn't be happier with the amount of time he'll spend behind bars. To me, this is, you know, it's a de facto life sentence, essentially, for him because he's not a young man anymore. And, you know, um, I believe that he is now going to, I believe it's just, he's going to pay for his crimes. Weinstein still maintains his innocence. The Los Angeles District Attorney's Office says it has begun the process to expel him to California, where he faces more criminal charges. Two Florida teenagers were injured after the Lexus they were street racing in went airborne and flipped over. Take a look. A neighbor's home surveillance camera caught the drag race as it happens. And as you can see, the road, the Lexus goes off the road, gets sent airborne and rolls multiple times after hitting the ground. And now, according to the grandmother of one of those teens, one teen broke a few ribs in the crash. The 737 MAX crisis is costing Boeing billions of dollars. When we come back, we'll have the latest on the estimates that are coming out exactly a year after the second deadly crash of the plane. But first, Fox News Business. Why your boss is mad over March Madness. I'm Connell McShane with the Fox Business Network. We have more coming up. You're watching Fox 47 News at 10. Well Wall Street enters bear territory and there's a new recall for Ford pickup trucks. Fox Business correspondent Connell McShane tells us what you need to know in tonight's Fox Means Business report. Lions and tigers and a bear market. All three of the major averages tumbling on Wednesday on Wall Street after the World Health Organization officially declared the coronavirus outbreak to be a pandemic. The Dow is now officially in bear market territory. That's defined as a drop of 20% or more from a recent high. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are just under that level. From the bad news on Wall Street to some good news for shoppers on Main Street. Consumer prices inching up by just one-tenth of 1% 1 last month, and that was a little less than expected. Recalled again, Ford is calling back more than 5,000 2019 Ranger pickup trucks. The problem involves the heating and cooling system, apparently the first recall didn't fix it. And here's something your boss might hate. There's a new report from WalletHub. It says employers will end up losing around $13 billion due to distracted workers watching the March Madness basketball tournament. The average employee said to spend around six hours checking out the games, which will be played this year with no fans because of the coronavirus. That's business. I'm Connell McShane. Tonight's Pump Patrol price is 188 at the Murphy USA on Superior Drive near Whittemore Road in St. John's. We're looking for the least expensive gas price in Michigan every day. If you see it, give us a call at 484-8847 and we'll put it on TV. The 737 Max crisis is costing Boeing 
$18.7 billion and counting. That's a new estimate that came out exactly a year after the second deadly crash of the plane. A total of 346 people died in the two crashes, and this week marks a year since the planes were grounded by the FAA. Boeing's costs include $8.3 billion in compensation to airlines that bought the plane and $6.3 billion in increased costs to build the jets. The company has had, has also paid a hundred million to the families of the crash victims and will likely have to pay more in future lawsuits. Buffets are a fixture in most casinos, but due to the coronavirus concerns, multiple casinos in Las Vegas are shutting them down. Now it's unclear what the workers at the buffets will do now. MGM Grant says there will be short term layoffs. More sanitizer, sanitizer stations are popping up in Vegas casinos. Some are still keeping the buffets open, but with staff serving guests. Fans of Chick-fil-A will be happy to know its signature sauce may soon be easier to come by. In April, 16 ounce bottles of Chick-fil-A sauce will be for sale in Florida grocery stores. All proceeds will go to Chick-fil-A's scholarship fund for employees. Now, for now, the pilot program is limited to Florida, but Chick-fil-A says it may roll bottled sauces out nationally. That will be some good news after day like today. Still to come on Fox 47 News at 10. Placing a bet on your favorite team is officially legal in Michigan. Coming up, we'll take a look inside the event kicking off sports gambling. If you've been betting on rain lately, you probably won and you'll probably win again tomorrow night as more rain out to the west is headed this way. We'll talk about when it gets here coming up. You're watching Fox 47 News at 10. Health. The coronavirus pandemic is stopping fans from watching the NCAA tournament games in person, but it won't stop them from placing legal bets. Detroit's MGM Grand Casino officially opened its sports book for business today. Fox 47's Kellen Buddy was there. The days of finding and paying a bookie under the table over sports gambling now legal in Michigan as the state's first legal wager placed Wednesday afternoon. I'm about to have a heart attack. Y'all got to get me out this <laughs> We so excited. I'm sweating. 62 year old Gregory Ponders, not the only one excited about making one of the state's first legal bets. I'm feeling good about myself right now. Former Lion Lomas Brown picking his former team to win more than six games next season. So, Lions, you got to hold up on your end of the bargain this year. More excitement and relief from those who worked hard to legalize sports gambling. What an exciting day for Detroit! To see behind me what we've done, this is amazing. And I think you're going to see a tremendous amount of revenue come from this at the end of the day. The millions they expect to generate will go back to the state's first responders, the school fund, and Michigan infrastructure. That money's regulated and provides money to the state to enhance the state for everybody. And while you're not only going to want to bet on your favorite team at MGM, you're also going to want to watch them. You can do that at the sports lounge just a few steps away. It's all about making sure that we provide an environment where you can be excited with other sports fans and cheer for your favorite team. The sports book and the lounge changing the way fans will watch sports. It's just going to bring more interest to the game. They're going to watch it until the end of the game because they're, they're invested in it. So whether you're betting on your hometown team, Michigan State, or the rivals just down the road. I want Michigan in the Big Ten Championship. You can place a bet that's both legal and helpful for the state. People bet all the time, and now you can come to a legal place and place your bet. I'll be back down to make a couple more bets. And with legislation passing in 2019, allowing for sports gambling at Michigan Sportsbooks, well, it's only a matter of time before we're going to be able to gamble on our phones. Thanks, Kellen. The rest of Michigan's casinos plan to eventually offer sports gambling. Most of them say they'll be taking bets by the time football season starts. Check out these photos that a viewer sent us from a grocery store in South Lansing. Things like toilet paper and Kleenex are running low on the shelves. But what do you really need if you have to stay at home for an extended period of time? 
Well, according to Nerd Wallet, there are appropriate ways to stack up without buying cases of toilet paper. First, the first recommendation, have two weeks worth of food on hand. You can do this by planning out your meals and buying accordingly. Nerd Wallet also says you can use that same process for things like hand soap, diapers or pet food. Only buy what you can realistically, what you'll realistically need. A record high number of people voted in Michigan's Democratic presidential primary yesterday, which was won by Joe Biden. Nearly 1.6 million people cast ballots on the Democratic side. That is almost 380,000 more than four years ago, a 31% increase. Turnout was down on the Republican side, though that was expected since President Donald Trump faced no serious challenge. You can get complete election results on our website at Fox 47 news.com. Nothing ruins the um, ambiance of your home like having a large pile of trash out front. People in one complex in Delhi Township called us because they couldn't get anyone to do anything about it. Fox 47's Alexis Ware has the details. They need to pay more to have them come more frequently. If twice a week isn't enough and it's still overflowing, they need to come three times a week, four if necessary. There's a lot, a lot of residents here. Woodland Lake Tennis reached out to Fox 47 News for help with the growing garbage pile. They're frustrated with the fact that management can't get anything done about it, but the complex says it can't be blamed for the trash haulers' failure to pick it up. Managers tell me they've left plenty of messages with Republic Services, and the company keeps saying someone will pick it up. To me, it needs to be dumped more frequently. I, I mean, if the residents don't have a place to put their trash, where are they supposed to put it? You there's nowhere to put it. <laughs> Obviously, it's overflowing extremely. Apartment managers are asking tenants to stop dumping trash until the pile is gone. That's gross. That's how animals and rodents come in your house. If you have trash sitting in your house, bugs, that's not a solution. Some of them want the complex to hire a new trash hauler, even if it causes rent to go up. If it raised rent five to ten dollars a month, as long as it didn't look like that, I think that would be a better solution than leaving the trash there or having the residents put it in their homes. Republic Services did eventually come out to empty the trash compactor, but would not comment on the situation. Apartment managers say they're doing everything they can to prevent this from happening again, including sending their employees to pick up the remaining trash. Alexis Ware, Fox 47 News. Thanks, Alexis. We reached out to Republic Services Trash Company, but did not get a response back. Wood Woodland Lake apartment managers say they're working with the company to resolve the issue. The apartment complex is asking tenants to be patient while they figure out a solution. It's now time to find another adorable adoptable their forever home. Meet Monkey. She is a three year old and is available for adoption at the Capital Area Humane Society. If you'd like more information on Monkey, you can visit the website listed on your screen. If you have any any pets that are missing, we can feature them on our social media. Just send us an email to petfinder at fox47news.com. Well, it was pretty cold and kind of cloudy out, but we did see some sun in downtown Mason today. Brett Collar tells us when we can get out our sunglasses and put away the winter coat. Next. You're watching Fox 47 News at 10. Your Storm Shield forecast with meteorologist Brett Collar, only on Fox 47 News at 10. Well, we're just getting over the, the hump of the week, and I don't think we're going to escape uh, any of the rain any time before the weekend. We've got a little bit more. Uh, it's not going to be much, and I think the best part in this, it's, it's really more tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, so most of tomorrow, I think, should be okay. Now, right now, no rain falling from the clouds, but there are a lot of those clouds out there that have kept temperatures from moving much. We're only down three degrees from the high today. 38 is our current reading on campus. A lot of clouds, but again, no rain falling from them at the moment. Back out to the west and northwest, showers moving through the Dakotas and Montana. Uh, that's our next system that's set to bring us some rain this time tomorrow. Now, some models, like the one I'll show you, are, are advancing some rain earlier than the previous runs. 
but the bottom line is tomorrow night this time probably going to have some rain in the area. You'll see it here on future track tonight. Cloudy skies, maybe a peak or two for some stars, but not much. As for tomorrow, we're hoping for a few peaks for some sunshine, but not really expecting much, but it should be a mainly dry day. Here's six o'clock and you can see here comes the front. Now this more recent run, you'll see it does produce some thunderstorms two hours south. I've been talking about this. Better chance for thunderstorms is two hours south, and I think it stays that way. But we also, in this more recent run, watch how it does bring us some rain during the early mid evening hours after seven or eight o'clock, and that's certainly possible. But the front itself that comes around 11 p.m. or midnight will bring us the best chance for some rain. The bottom line is tomorrow, 7 p.m. through midnight, plan on some rain or at least be prepared for it. It's really right around midnight that we're expecting the best chance for a few showers. Not much and it's out of here quickly. By daybreak Friday we're looking to see more sunshine. Uh, Friday looks like a better day but it will be cool and breezy. We keep it cool Saturday and there's that next system I've been talking about. It's two hours south and it looks like it stays just two hours south Saturday but again it will be close. If you're going to be down near the state line or even south of I-94 Saturday I'm not going to rule out a snowflake or two. I don't think that we'll see much. It's really Ohio and Indiana's problem, but we'll watch it closely because if the models adjust, our chance for snow might be going up. At this point, it looks small, but I can't rule it out. Later Thursday, showers are expected. Outside of that, it's Tuesday into Wednesday of next week that we see our next chance for rain back in the forecast. As for tonight, again, hoping for some clearing, but for the most part, it's going to be a mostly cloudy sky. Lows will be in the mid 30s, and frankly, based upon current trends, it's going to be hard to fall to 34. It might only be 35, 36. Tomorrow, we top out in the mid 50s. Some models are even hinting it might only be the lower 50s. Really depends upon if we see some sunshine or not. But we are expecting showers in the evening, and yeah, it's going to be well above where we should be this time of the year. Your 1-800 Hanson's weather kid is six-year-old Roman from Grand Ledge. So Friday looks better, cooler, mm -hmm. and also breezy, but more sunshine. Saturday, that system with that snow will stay just two hours south, but it's going to be close. For us, it's Tuesday and Wednesday that we have the next chance for some rain, but we get some dry time. Right. Sunday yeah. is looking all right. Right, exactly. A good way to end the weekend, you know what I mean, with a nice dry day. Yeah, we'll do that on Sunday. Yep. All right. Well, thanks yeah. so much, Brett. Let's take a look at tonight's Yes Picks. First, Kathy Crawford sent us this pick of her dog, Ziggy, hanging out. <laughs> He's cute. Then Lisa Sutton shared this throwback picture of her dog, Blue. Yes, with the holiday spirit and the little antler. So cute. And finally, Jerry Gleason shared this picture of her pets waiting for for supper. That's kind of how I look like before dinner. If you have a picture you'd like to share, send us an email to yespix at fox47news.com. There's plenty to do around town. Julie Williams has the details. All right, calling all Central Michigan grads. There's a CMU mixer. It's tomorrow night right here in Lansing. It's at Urban Beat from 530 to 730. Now that is on Turner Street. Join fellow alumni for an evening full of food, drinks and entertainment. We'll have more local events and things to do right here on Fox 47. So that means if you have an event you want to share, send us an email. Let's do around town at Fox 47 news.com. It's time now to recognize another excellent educator going above and beyond in the classroom and making a significant impact on the lives of Michigan students. Here's this week's excellence in education award winner. This week's Michigan Lottery Excellence in Education winner is Carrie Marciniak. Tell me a little bit about why, why you teach. I started a kindness program with my students to bring, we started by bringing therapy dogs into the classroom. I extended that into something more. I wanted the kids to go into the community. Tell me a little bit about that and what you've seen in the kids. In my classroom, I've seen the climate change. The kids really care about each other, and they, but I just wanted them to feel the uh, impact it has on your heart when you do good things for other people. So all the kids in our classroom, when we do things like this, when we do the kindness program, they, they realize that everybody has special gifts, including themselves. Carrie Marciniak receives a $1,500 check from the Michigan Lottery, and her class at McKenzie Elementary receives a $500 grant. Excellence in Education Award, sponsored by the Michigan Lottery, providing more than $23 billion to public education since 1972.
Well, very well deserved. You can watch the rest of her interview on our website at fox47news.com. Still to come on Fox 47 News at 10, the FDA has approved the first test at home to confirm ovulation. Those details when we come back. You're watching Fox 47 News at 10. Fox 47 Sports at 60 starts now. The slide continues for the Detroit Pistons, who have now dropped five straight games. Detroit lost on the road against the Philadelphia 76ers, 124 to 106. They are now only half a game above Cleveland for last place in the Eastern Conference. It was a rough night last night for the former Piston star Andre Drummond as he misses his free throw early in the fourth quarter. Take a look. He doesn't even graze the net. The C Cleveland Cavaliers, his new team, lost to the Chicago Bulls 108-103. to Drummond did, however, score 21 points. A major announcement for March Madness, the president of the NCAA has announced the, that the only essential staff and limited family members will be able to attend games for the men's and women's tournaments. That includes the Final Four and Championship game in Atlanta. It comes as different parts of the country have banned large gatherings over the coronavirus. And that's your sports in 60. And we're now learning that the NBA has reportedly put the rest of the season on hiatus. It comes after a player for the Utah Jazz has tested positive for the coronavirus. The Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder are now quarantined in the Thunders arena. The coronavirus is making many people more aware of others coughing and sneezing around them. The CDC has a new term to protect against the virus. It's called social distancing or keeping a good distance from others when out and about. But is that even possible in large cities? Fox's Sharon Crawley has a look. Why are you wearing the mask? Just in case. <laughs> you never know. What happens when you're in a jammed subway car and you're right up against somebody else? Wash my hands the second I get out. That's it. Take a shower when I get home and uh, wash my clothes. They say like, you know, um, it's more if you already have the disease, but at the same time, it's are my odds better if I have this on, you know? Like if someone sneezes next to me, I'm covered. Subway riders trying to stay healthy as the number of New Yorkers testing positive for the novel coronavirus increases every day. The Centers for Disease Control recommends keeping a safe social distance from one another during this outbreak. In a city of more than 8 million people, that can be nearly impossible to do, especially on a subway during rush hour. We have a real concern about the super packed subway cars, particularly in rush hour. If you don't need to be on one of those, please avoid them. Even it means letting a few trains pass until one's less crowded. The governor, the mayor, and health officials are hoping that if New Yorkers practice social distancing, they may help slow the spread of the coronavirus. In order to transmit coronavirus, you have to be within six feet of another human being. Uh, it's spread mostly by coughing, by sneezing, or by direct physical contact, like shaking hands. Dr. David Goldberg is an infectious disease specialist who recommends social distancing to his patients. There's preliminary evidence that people can be infectious before they show any signs of symptoms. New Yorkers are going to be able to have a really big impact on this crisis by your own actions. Actions the mayor believes might make a big difference, especially if, as some health experts predict, the coronavirus outbreak gets worse before it gets better. The FDA has approved the first at-home test to confirm ovulation. The approved test allows a woman to measure her levels of a hormone released by the ovary after ovulation. The hormone is essential for fertility and sustaining a pregnancy. A woman would need to collect first morning urine and dip a strip in it for five, sec five to ten seconds. She would then have to read the number of lines. One means you have um, the minimum amount to sustain a pregnancy. Now the company's founder says if a woman is constantly seeing negative, she should talk to her doctor. The company will also launch a mobile app this spring, which can guide a woman on when she would need to take the test.